Hello my friends, welcome back to my channel. I'm just here to bring you a quick little tutorial on how I do paper weaving. So most of you probably already know, but in case there's a newbie out there, um, or if you just want some fresh inspiration or a little refresher on a technique, then perhaps this is something you might want to watch. So I'm using book page today. And this is a little preparation for my collaboration for Rach and Bella Crafts uh, for the Journal Jigsaw project, collaboration. Uh, so first off, I cut strips of book page. My guillotine here, it's got a metal strip where you cut against, and that is around half an inch wide. So I just line up my book page to the edge of the metal and chop it. So I end up with approximately half inch strips and I just cut across my book page or whatever paper you're using. It doesn't have to be book page. It can be any paper you like, scrapbook paper, copy paper, magazine paper, whatever. So that's how I cut my strips. Uh, before I got my guillotine it was a lot more labour intensive and annoying and took so much longer. So I've got here all my strips cut. I've got two different colours of book page. You can see the difference in those colours. And I prefer to have two different colours, particularly if I'm working with neutrals, because it invites interest visually, as well as the text. And today I am going with this lighter book page is in Spanish, and this browner one is in Dutch. Uh, so just adds a bit more fun as well but it doesn't matter you can use English because you only get bits of words showing so use whatever you have right so let's get into constructing I use a book page as a base because I've got like so many book pages and I need to use them so they make a fantastic base and this is quite a sturdy modern well when I say modern it's like from the 50s or 60s it's not that modern but it's a pretty white um well creamy white and sturdy paper quite thick paper and I just take my first strip so keep your colors your different colors separated into two piles as much as you can and I'm just going to take my first strip and put a little bit of glue on the top of it just about the width of your strip and glue it on one edge and I'm using tacky glue because I find it easier but use whatever glue you prefer whether it's um, you know like art glitter glue or glue stick or what have you now I like to take my next strip and <clears throat> excuse me I'm going a bit froggy now, when starting, it's always the most difficult, I find, into working out which way round. So this one is going to go over top here, but I'm not going to glue it yet. I'm just kind of visualizing because it's easier to visualize it. This one is going to go technically underneath, but we've already glued that on. So I just glue the underside of it and butt the edge of it up against our first strip. So it's like it goes underneath for all intents purposes, but we're not actually putting it underneath. That makes sense. Okay, now the problem with that is that this one needs to go underneath that. So before it sticks down, let's just peel it up, stick it to there. We wouldn't need to actually peel it up. We could just do the same thing as what we did. Um, put a bit of extra glue there because I've wrecked it. So let's line that one back up. And when you're lining them up, don't put them right hard against each other. Leave a, just the tiniest little gap and it will make life easier as you go along. So now I can glue this one down. And this one's going to go over top of your first strip. 
I'm just trying to it doesn't matter if you end up with bigger gaps it will all turn out fine I promise and then it goes under the second strip and I like to put a bit of glue down as I go and it's just helpful for holding everything in place particularly when you cut it so that it doesn't all fall apart okay I prefer to do strip by strip so a strip this way then a strip this way backwards and forwards I found if I go all this way and then come back and do the weaving um, that's where errors creep in and I end up making mistakes but do whatever's easiest for you if you prefer to go all in one direction um, and then back the other way that's absolutely fine I used to do that so this one is going to go under this first strip so I'm going to lift that up I put glue on the top and bottom of this next book page strip and then I'm going to line it up so it's going to glue to the base and to the strip all at the same time okay so now I'm going to take one of the paler strips and this one's going to go on top so I'm just going to put glue on one side I'm going to lift up the middle strip lay it down on top of our top strip on top of this one and then I can put a little bit of glue there and then a little bit of glue under here and then right underneath at points I will drop in a drop of glue okay now I can do go ahead and do two this direction and then come back and do another one the other direction so this one goes under again so I'm going to do top and bottom of my strip, underside and top side if you like. Lift up our first strip and slide it in place. And while the glue is still wet, just lining it up. It will shift slightly even so, but it should be, you know, relatively fine. And if it goes astray, it's just going to add character. Don't, don't be too worried about it going awry. Try and avoid big, big gaps. But even if you end up with big gaps, it's not the end of the world. It will still look pretty cool. And so I just continue like that, building my weaving. Uh, I find it quite therapeutic when I'm not doing it on camera. Like if I'm just watching TV or something, I just weave away. Just no pressure no time limit just building as i go um, when i'm on camera it's a little bit more stressful because i become more conscious of time making sure i do it in a timely manner but also not making a mistake so yeah it's a, it's a little different when you do it on camera but that's okay well, i just wanted to give you a little little tutorial in case it's new to you or you wondered how to achieve it uh, this is my second go at doing this video I recorded a video for you guys on this uh, several days ago and I uploaded it and I went to edit it this morning and um, the video cut out halfway it was only half the process so I'm trying again and hopefully this one will go good so I'm going to pop the camera on pause I'm going to continue weaving and bring you back towards the end and we'll finish up together so stay with me I'll be right back okay so I have continued weaving I'm not going to do the whole thing because I I've already done multiple of these between failed videos and the like uh, so, but I'm going to show you a little trick so this book page is not as wide as it is as long so you might end up with some bits that are too long and some bits that are too short. So I'm going to just trim this off here and pretend that's as big as I wanted my weaving to be. So I'm just going to chop right through just so I can demonstrate something for you. So right through there. So your long bits that you don't need, we can use them rather than using uh, cutting more strips cutting more pages if we need more and you've got more from leftover 
hopefully that makes sense. I feel like that didn't make sense, but hopefully you know what I mean. You can use those to fill the gaps, even if they are not long enough. And just continue going. So weaving under, over, under, over. I neglected to actually say that at the beginning. If, you know, some people might be completely new to weaving and how that works. So you alternate under and over, under and over. That's how it goes in both directions. So that you get the alternate, alternate papers on top. To create almost a checkerboard pattern, I guess. So using those cutoffs to continue weaving across. Like so. Now what happens if you have a couple that are too short? So I'm just going to demonstrate by taking and cutting one in half. So we've got the scrap. Rather than cut a whole complete new strip, we can still use this. So I'm going to start as per normal. And this bit's going to go on top at the at this end so put it on top and we're going to glue it so far and on top again so and then under and you can see it's not long enough to go on top of the next strip so I'm going to glue the whole thing down underneath so put that strip on top that's supposed to be on top and then this one needs to go on top. So I'm going to grab our little strip here. I'm just going to put a little bit of glue on both sides. Just a little bit. And we're going to slide it under that one. And then continue weaving. So it gives the appearance that it's one long strip. But it's not. So I think that makes way more sense than cutting all new strips if you've got enough pieces that you can just kind of piece together to finish the job. Like so. And I'm going to leave it there. I'm not going to continue weaving across for the same reason that I've already got multiple of these done and ready. I will use them but I don't need heaps and I can always make more. So then once you're happy, just trim it up so everything's straight, that you've got no overhang, whether you do it with scissors or a knife and ruler or a trimmer, whatever you use to cut. And I'm just tidying up the edges. As you know, sometimes my lineup is not straight. It's a little off kilter, so just tidying it up. And we've got a beautiful bit of weaving to then use. Now the last step that I do is I just run around the edges and make sure everything is glued down. So if there's any little flappy bits, because I've cut uh, some of the edges, I've cut off, so there might be places where I've actually cut through the glue. Or where I didn't glue it down properly to begin with, or I missed a bit. So just going and making sure everything's glued down. Now if you are cutting into this to make something like this I would use intact as a piece of ephemera, make a journal card or something. But if you cut it up into pieces then also run around your cut edges afterwards with your glue just to make sure all the edges are nicely glued down. And that is paper weaving. Very relaxing, fun process but does require a little bit of concentration just to make sure you get it in the right order. But honestly, guys, if you end up with some under when they should be over or vice versa, don't sweat it. It will look fine. It will still be beautiful, still be effective. It's no biggie. And if it really does bother you, just find a little fussy cut or um, die cut or something to stick over top of it and hide it. No harm done. Okay, guys, thanks for joining me. Hope you enjoyed this wee tutorial. Watch out for the, my collab video that's out on the 13th of April. Looking forward to it. See you then. Bye.